So actually, in the bus also, I used to get a lot of time to relax and then study for four or five hours uh, like late into the night. I used to take a walk with my dad very often, like at least twice a week. And at that point, I think it's important to just leave it for them and just try to cope up with what's going on uh, currently. So I want to understand from all of you, what was it? How did you plan these two years? I'm Abhinav. I got ninth rank in CT. Uh, well. For in 11th and for most part of 12th, like instead of like focusing on the end goal, which was the exam, is to focus on learning the concepts. So instead of like so, uh, solving, or oh, I'll solve like 100 questions a day, which is more relevant in the end of the preparation, is to focus on learning the concepts well, so that they can be applied later. So because when you actually understand some concept, you remember it for a very long time. So all the derivations, all the like theories, all the lo uh, like the logic behind solving problems. That was like the main focus for me in 11th and most part of 12th. And uh, during the end of preparation, it was more about like solving more questions, recalling, revising again and again. Yeah, that true. Uh, Got it. So small targets, make sure you achieve them before going to the next one, right? Very nice, excellent. So uh, I just want to ask you now, I've heard you know all your responses about how you try to pace yourself and everything. And I'm sure uh, as many of you said, the daily part of it is as important as planning the long term, right? So from the daily angle, right, how did you all manage your time? Because time, I think, is of prime essence. Uh, everyone today who's in the 11th and 12th, you hardly uh, get to even talk to them because they're always shuttling in between uh, classes or studies or tests or things like that. So how did you all manage your time during these two years to a, use it efficiently and B, again, coming back to the point, not let yourself get drained out. So how did you manage your time? So yeah, so I used to commute by bus. So I was to reach a little bit late, so 5.45 somewhere. So actually in the bus also, I used to get a lot of time to relax. So uh, sometimes it can be stressful, but uh, that was also like some time for me to relax, one hour. And then I used to come home, uh, relax for 15, 20 minutes and start studying have my food and then study for four or five hours uh, like late into the night. Uh, yeah, that's all I would say. Uh, I used to take like uh, during the five hours that I used to study after like uh, coming home, like there will be a lot of breaks in between. Like normally a study session would last around 40 minutes, then 10 minutes break and uh, same thing going on. It's like I used to go out, like take some more. Yes, it helps a lot because uh, uh, Throughout the long, uh, like when you study for a long time, you just uh, sol while solving problems, you just uh, look at the problem for some time. And just time passes. You don't know what you are doing, and you just waste a lot of time like that. So it's like important to take breaks in between and calm your mind and like give give yourself a fresh start. Uh, was there something that you used to do, say on a daily basis or a weekly basis or on a monthly basis? But from time to time, how would you? Uh, just bring down the stress and uh, relax. What were the things, that, some hobbies, some going out, what were the things that you like to do, uh, you know, just to uh, zone out of those studies and relax? Uh, I should take a walk with my dad very often, like uh, at least twice a week. Okay. And it used to be a long distance walk, like uh, five, six kilometers on a stretch. Okay. It's like you just walk without like thinking about it. No agenda, yeah, just, just walk. walk. So what yeah. kind of conversations did you engage in then? What were your topics of discussion? It was not studying in the leisure. Of course, just, I mean, definitely should uh, not be. It was just like just whatever, what is happening like in the family or what is happening in the world. Just, or sometimes you will not talk at all, just walk. Cool. So uh, I'm going to go into a slightly different uh, subject, very important one, which I think it is. And it is, you all have your schedule, you all have your plans, you're all preparing on a daily basis. You're all trying to uh, uh, set small targets, you're trying to achieve it on a daily basis. But then there are those times where something unforeseen happens. You might not feel well, you might have a family function to attend, there might be guests who have come over to your house. Anything can happen. And during those times, you fall behind your schedule. Right? Something uh, which is probably not within your control. What do you do at those times to make sure A, you don't panic, B, you get back on schedule? Because it's very easy when you're when you're following a schedule, uh, things are going right, great. But when those times come when you fall back, most Routines and schedules go into the uh, dustbin at that time because you feel you cannot cope 
go back or you know cannot uh, go back to that so how did each of you uh, manage those times where where it was not uh, out of your choice but you fell back in your routine how did you uh, manage those times we'll start with abhin now uh, like there are some cases where you can like easily catch up with the backlog in like one or two days okay. and sometimes you have missed something so major that no matter how much you try you can't catch up with the backlog like you're going to study the next day and you're going to not be able to study what was done on that day and at that point i think it's important to just leave it for then and just try to cope up with what's going on uh, currently so then the other backlog can be covered in like a sunday or some major holiday comes up a vacation comes up you can cover it then the important thing is not to like keep lagging behind the like whatever is going on in the so class. instead of making it a compounding effect you limit it yes don't panic and you uh, just try to get back on schedule as to what is being taught come back to that when time permits yes. like we do in the exam leave a difficult question and come back to it great okay. so now uh, the last part of uh, this discussion i just want to understand uh between your 11th and 12th i'm sure there was a transition where there was incremental uh, you know dedication that was required effort that was required as well as pressure that was building from the other side so i want to understand from each of you number one how did you manage that pressure that was coming from the outside from the inside and how did you slowly start building up your uh, you know level of effort in studies so like from teachers and family i didn't have any pressure like but for the internal pressure i think you have to experience what it does for you to understand that you don't need to ha- like take uh, how do i say this you don't need to be under pressure so like uh, towards the end of 12th like in november or october i wrote a olympiad okay. and i really wanted to qualify that olympiad because i like the subject very much okay. but i i was under a lot of stress and like okay i have to do this i have to do this and i didn't i couldn't qualify it because like uh, because of all the stress i couldn't like properly perform in the exam that gave me like a idea okay this is what stress is uh, reality check yeah okay. not not like reality check it's like okay if i am stressed in the exam this is the outcome even though i have prepared this much i'm not going to be able to perform well so moving on i was just like okay th- this is the exam is coming up i've done all i can just write the exam okay. be as chill as possible just write it i can't do anything else so that actually helps uh, increase your performance also more than actually studying if you are under uh, less stress your performance goes up that's what i let's now move into your entire exams right so you had your 12 standard exams and i just want to go into the build up to those exams so you've been giving tests over the last two years you've had tests on almost a weekly basis i want to understand from you how helpful those tests were how much pressure they created what was your experience I, you can share whatever you want adding to chirak's point mm-hmm. like in the same way that the academically the mock test need not reflect on the final exam result even the environment of the test in the college you'll get the test in a very peaceful environment everything will be quiet you'll get the most ideal uh, place to take the exam in like the omr is distributed on time it's collected on time you get proper like rough sheets you get a proper i don't know uh, environment the, the desk ideal is, setting if i would say even the desks uh, the chairs everything is good over there but once you actually get the center you may not get the same things you get like while writing the mock test so you have to always be prepared got uh, in the college test you may have sometimes option of like like choosing the place where you set so sometimes uh, what this is what i used to do so i should choose one place in the classroom and take all my tests over there and once i use like change the position it becomes a whole different, different environment <laughs> and that really it impacts works. you got it so you got that practice also okay okay nice okay excellent and uh, let's come to the big day the d day right now right so your uh, ct exams are tomorrow so what did today feel like what was what was the feeling how did you uh, sleep the previous night how was it how was it all so before the d day like other than not studying or revising one thing i would like i'd like to do was in the night i would walk just keep walking until i get tired 
and that would force my body to sleep. Okay. So there was no point of getting nervous because you had to sleep. Got it. So that really helped a lot. Like it was like uh, there was no issue of oh I'm too nervous I can't sleep till twelve in the night because you were so tired that you just sleep. Excellent. Very interesting. Very interesting. Approach. I mean uh, the point is to just do a light walk or exercise. It's not like you do a marathon so that yeah, you yeah, end up with sore muscles yeah. the next day. Got it. So I think uh, very important is to reach the exam hall a little before time, right? I think I think it all adds up, right? That that sleeping early, waking up early, being relaxed in that relaxed stream of mind, and then reaching the exam hall early so that you're not you're not your heart uh, rate is not very high when you're there, right? Even if it is, you have time to calm it down. You have time to get used to the environment, the surroundings. So reach a little early, right? Not you know, if 10.30 is around 10.25, run, run, run into the class and sweaty and just sit. That, that I think, also adds, even if you've studied, if you've slept, but just reaching that exam hall a little early gives you that sense of calm or time to, you know, get into that sense of calm, right? Okay, so you've sat in the exam hall, you've meditated uh, your uh, paper, that it clock hits 10.30 and you've got your papers, right? What then? How do you go about it so you do you all go through the entire questions once and then start answering or do you say no let me go one by one what are your what are your uh, ways of attacking the paper uh, i do a similar thing but sometimes in ct the questions from the same chapter are often grouped together if hmm. i'm not wrong hmm. so sometimes when when you can't get a uh, like one question like subsequently you may have difficulty getting the other questions even though they are easy. So that time I like to like skip to some other section and start again. So that like gives a fresh start and you can come back to the left. That's a very, very interesting point. You know, sometimes he says the topics are grouped together. So instead of skipping one question, coming back again, getting demotivated with the next question, you try to skip that topic. You I'm sure will realize where that topic ends and come back to the topic once you've done the paper. Very nice, very interesting point. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Yes. And uh, so during the test, I'm sure there was at least few of those moments where you all felt a sense of panic with with you know a couple of sometimes what happens is everything's going well and then suddenly those two three questions come where you are you know a little uh, misplaced or you know you're not you're not in your comfort zone anymore so what would you do in those situations and how did you come back and say no it's, it's fine so what what was your uh, thought process at that time because it's all come down to that day right this is the day that you've been working for the last two years and even a small, uh, you know, deviation from what you think should be the path can be very, very, uh, you know, scary at that time. Right? So how do you just come back? Because this is an important uh, message that I want you to give out to the, you know, to the juniors. So what do you do at that moment? How do you go past that? Like if you can't solve one question, even after trying it twice at most, uh, I think the best option is to just leave it and solve it as like giving as much as a time break as possible because after like solving it twice your mind is conditioned to the solution you are trying to achieve maybe that's not a correct approach but you will try to use that approach again and again and the quicker you come back to the question again the idea will be still fresh in your mind and you will go back to the way you are solving it before so if you come back to it later Maybe you get a new approach, a new idea, or you see the mistake you are making. Got and it. that is... Cool. Thanks, guys. Now I'm going to ask you a very different question. Okay. We'll finish with this question. What was the first thing that you did after your exam, which you've been looking forward to do? What was that one thing that as soon as your exam was done, I wanted to do? What is the first fun thing that you were waiting for and you did after your exam? You're thinking the most for this? I'm <laughs> going to a movie probably. Okay, which movie did you go for? Uh, spider Verse, Across the spider Super. Enjoyed? Yes. I just want to understand from all of you, what role has, uh, you know, Diksha played in the success? I think the fact that the teachers were willing to give their own personal phone number to you and uh, like tell you that you can contact them at any time is a big thing in itself. Because until, uh, like in my school days, until 10, you could only see your teacher at, from this point of the day till this point of the day. You go even a little bit later to ask them doubts, they are like, no. But in Diksha, at least the teachers are like, okay, I'll stay back a little bit, I'll clear your doubts. 
uh, okay you will study at night if you have any doubt you can message me at that time and I, when i am free i'll uh, reply that really helps a lot it helps develop a connection with the teacher yeah the peer group uh, in diksha is really good because you have a lot of people who are better than you and they are going towards the same goal it is very hard to like be the best in the class or in the college for long periods of time and uh, the p- people around you they are uh, good in a variety of things so once you like establish a good like friend group and a peer group you are able to learn a lot of things from different people so that really helps a lot